Hi, I'm Corey Driver, and this is Moving Forward. So this week, we're talking a bit about families, uh, and we're looking at 1 Samuel 3 and John 1, uh, 1 Samuel side. So the context of this is really important. Everybody knows maybe from Sunday school, like God calling to Samuel three times and Samuel going to Eli, what's up? Uh, Eli said, I didn't call you, go back to bed, right? We all know that story. The context is super important. Now, the word of the Lord is rare in those days. And Eli has had trouble seeing, which is a not too subtle indication that he's just not picking up what the Lord is putting down, right? And he's a priest and his sons are priests and they are bad priests. They have been hurting the people. They've been abusing their office, telling lies. I'm not kidding. Um, saying that stuff doesn't matter when it does and that stuff does matter when it doesn't, right? So they've been messing up the people's sacrifices and the people have been saying, look, if you do that, it's going to mess up what we're doing to God. And they strong arm the people and they say, no, we're going to have our way, despite what God says and despite what you say, we're going to use force to make sure that what we want happens. And also they've been abusing and possibly raping women who work at the tabernacle complex. Um, it's a real bad scene and it's been going on for some time and Eli only raises the issue to his sons when the matter becomes talked about in public. So this has been, this abuse has been happening for a long, long time. It's been ongoing. Eli, who's both their father and the head priest, and so doubly should be supervising them, these two bad priests, um, has not done anything until it becomes like this big scandal. And then all of a sudden, uh, Eli tries to say, look, you're doing it wrong. Um, but it's too late. It's too late. Too many people have been harmed and a whole nation has been swayed and harmed by poor leadership and lies about what is good and what is bad. Okay? So that's the context. And so Eli has not been being a great dad, has not been being a great high priest, and has allowed his sons to just go and harm all kinds of people. And into that context, God speaks. And Samuel, who has been devoted to the temple, has a sort of father in Eli. And you can tell the relationship. Eli addresses Samuel as my son, though he is not technically speaking his son. And God really wants to have a message for Eli. But Eli's gotten to the point where he can't perceive God anymore. And so God gives a message to Samuel and tries again and again and again to speak to Samuel. And eventually, verse 10, look, God stands in the same room over Samuel. It's, it's God is bodily present there in the room speaking to Samuel. And the message that God gives Samuel is, we got to start over. Leadership's bad. And the very next day, Eli says, tell me what God said to you, my son. And so God, even while God is pushing aside Eli's dynasty of priests because they're terrible and they've been abusing people, God has still provided a family voice, like a fictive son in Samuel to speak to Eli and tell him, hey, this is what's going to happen. So Eli hears the word of the Lord through, I think, a kindness, right? God could just sweep Eli and his sons aside. No problem, right? They're terrible. But God provides a kind voice from a young man to a father who has not been a very good father to say, nonetheless, here's the word of the Lord. I think that's a gift, right? Here's another gift. Jesus has appeared and has started calling people. Philip, 
Peter, Andrew, James, and John. And Philip has this message. He's super excited. And he goes and tells Nathaniel. Now, we're not super clear what their relationship is, but um, there's at least several traditions that say that Philip and Nathaniel are brothers. There's mention of other brothers in this early part of John. So I, I think that's what's going on here. Um, and Philip brings the word to his family member, or at least to his close friend, to say, we found the one. The one that Moses spoke about. We found him. Here he is. Come and see. Nathaniel says, well, where is he from? He's from Nazareth. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Um, just as an impersonal aside, down the, down the street from the big old church in Nazareth today, there's an excellent baker. Ooh, really good bread can come from Nazareth. Um, so that is what it is. Um, but families can initiate, can say, look, we found God. Let's go and see. And despite skepticism, continue to encourage. Like, hey, no, come see. Like, he is from Nazareth, sure. But let's go see anyway. And Nathaniel, as you know from reading the text, it just falls in love, hook, line, and sinker. Um, because of his brother's, or at least dear friend's, encouragement. Eli and his sons failed. And they failed to look after each other. They failed to tell each other the truth. Eli, a father, a senior priest, should have told his sons the truth. What you are doing is not right. Instead, he ignored it until it became a national scandal. Philip told his brother the truth. And even when Nathaniel was not initially impressed, still encouraged him by telling him the truth. Well, we have found the one, right? So the tough thing is there's a lot of family disagreement these days in the world over what's happening in the world. I understand that. I experience that. That's real. The good news is that God speaks, whether it's through Samuel whether it's through Philip, God is speaking. God doesn't give up on families. And God keeps sending folks to speak kindly into families and say, you may not believe it, but here's the truth. And so, with God's gracious gift of truth, we are called to be the kind family member that speaks the truth to our people. Now, that might be biological family, that might just be your people, whatever. But uh, the call to new obedience is this. God is speaking. We are hearing truth. We need to be people of truth. <laughs>